I wanted to open up the space so the light would come into the whole apartment and to make it cozy and full of light. I was inspired by the Villa La Roche from Le Corbusier with the curved wall and uh, the colors, mostly the Prussian blue and the terracotta. It's a beautiful house to me, uh, located in the 16th district of Paris. My client, Damien, used to live in the same street as this very house a few years back. So he was really amused and he really liked the idea of using this reference for his project. My name is Flor Gustin. I'm a French architect based in Paris and co-founder of Studio Amaté. The apartment is located in the 18th district of Paris. It's a district called Jules Joffrin. It's close to Montmartre. It's a very cute corner of Paris. I really love coming here. The apartment is located next to the beautiful church called Église Notre-Dame de Clignancourt. It's very close to the metro and also the city hall of the 18th arrondissement. The building was built in the 1890s. It's a facade from the post houseman era. The apartment was in a really bad shape, with a very dark core, uh, so we had to rethink everything from scratch. I love finding projects in fairly worn conditions like this one because it gives me the ability and justification to redesign everything. I suggested to Damien a very compact but functional floor plan with influences from the architectural modernity movement during the 1930s. In the initial plan, the apartment had a kitchen in one corner, a small toilet, a central living room, a bedroom and also an extra living room. The apartment was occupied by an old person who still washed in the old way, so we needed to create a whole new bathroom without losing too much space. First, I created a new bathroom where the kitchen once was. I removed the small toilet room and moved the kitchen to the middle of the open space. I also removed all the partition walls that were non-structural in the plan. The curved wall around the bedroom was added, which lets the light come into the dark corner of the apartment. Lastly, I simply designed a large storage wall that goes from the kitchen all the way to the bathroom. There's a small entrance as you enter the apartment. Blue tiles and paint were used on the floor and walls to create a unique experience when entering. I wanted to create a kitchen which is open to the living room, enabling the client to welcome guests in a casual atmosphere. The kitchen island is the centerpiece here. The countertop is made of dark blue tiles with red grout. There's a round sink on one end and an induction hub on the other. Above the induction hub, there's a round stainless steel range hood. It's like a totem in the center of the room, visible from all the angles of the apartment. The island also contains lots of storages, as well as the oven. Below the island, there's also a washing machine. The entrance is a part of a large storage wall composed of a white okume wood facade, which hides most of the functions of the flat. This includes the wardrobe, wash basin, boiler, fridge, pantry, plumbing and more. This makes it possible to free up space in the apartment so we can bring in more light into the entrance and kitchen area. Beside the kitchen is the dining area. There's a square wooden dining table that can sit up to four people. A brand new bathroom was created where the kitchen once was. The door of the bathroom has two functions. It's either part of the storage wall or either it closes the bathroom. 
the wash basin area is hidden within the main storage. When you enter the bathroom and close the door behind you, the wash basin is revealed. The bathroom was kept simple and consists of a shower and a toilet without any elements that could stop the entry of natural light. The colors in the bathroom were inspired by the colors of Villa La Roche by Le Corbusier. For the grout between the tiles, contrasting colors were used, red on blue and blue on red, like a negative. The living room is through a passageway between the curved wall and the dining space. I decided to bring the light from the living room facing the street to the heart of the apartment by removing the walls between the living room and the bedroom. We changed the stone of the fireplace. We replaced it with a red Prussian travertine to match with the colors of the apartment. Behind the sofa is a large black tomato shelf which really fits into the lightness and airiness of this space. At the end of the living room, there's a small balcony that can be accessed by the two glass doors. The bedroom is behind a curved wall. It hugs the room and softens the space inside and outside the room. The bedroom feels like a white modernist cocoon with an integrated bench on the edge of the window. There's an additional storage underneath this bench. On the other side of the room, there's a built-in shelf with the bottom shelf extended to act as a bedside table. At the end of the bench, there's a small shelf for a bedside lamp. It's at the same height as the lamp on the other side of the room. Paris is known for having extremely expensive housing, often in a pitiful state and also with fairly small surfaces due to these extreme costs of living. So to me, in such a metropolis, we should assume that tiny living space could be the norm. The spaces can be made to be a great housing solution with some work on speciality and rationalism in an ecological way of thinking. We love inspiring you with our YouTube videos. So here's a special bundle from our store to inspire you even more. It includes our new essential guide to your living room, a digital guide packed with expert tips and tricks to help you transform your living room into the perfect space. And our first hardcover book featuring 30 of our favorite small footprint homes filled with detailed floor plans and gorgeous photography. The bundle is available worldwide from our store just for you. You're welcome. Thanks for watching. And if you're an architect or designer with a project we could feature, please share it with us at nevertoosmall.com slash submissions.